On the last episode of Dark Coast, we picked up where episode one had left us off on the first couple of days into our two-week expedition to Area A, with a research team consisting of Alaskan Bigfoot investigator and retired police officer Larry Beans Baxter, Bigfoot researcher and drone pilot Damon Irons, and crew member Luca. The episode covered days three and four, in which foggy and rainy weather began dominating on those days as would be the trend going forward for much of the expedition. We continued to explore the surrounding area. In the woods on the opposite side of the bay from us, we came across a large number of ambiguous but intriguing large footprints pressed deep into the mossy hillside. Later on, we discovered some sort of possibly abandoned, ramshackled cabin quite a ways up the hill that didn't appear to have been in use for quite some time. While we were aware of previous human presence in this area, in the form of a small community here over 100 years ago, this cabin appeared to be newer than that. It was interesting to see and made us wonder who made it and for what reason. We ended the last episode with a trek up to the ridge over our side of the bay in order to camp up there that night, where last year I had experienced some interesting noises during the night while camping there. Day number five, morning here. I guess it's almost afternoon here in the campsite. Damon, how'd you sleep? Uh, you know, pretty good, pretty good. Moss is pretty comfy, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, not too bad the first half. The second half definitely was pretty solid. You hear anything weird? Just over here a little bit. Sounded a little snoopy. You know what I mean? Like something was snooping, but. It could have been a Martin, kind of small. I would have made the same noises and stuff like that. But yep. Nothing super obvious, but I can't wait to put the audio on the computer and look for yeah. the, look it over. Check the therm as well. Yeah. Beans, you just came up here to deploy some cameras, and you you found us. We're all in one piece. Yeah, I uh, wasn't sure where you guys were camping, but I wanted this was the general area where I wanted to set up a camera. So I uh, hiked up here this morning and found you guys in one piece. And it sounds like you guys had a quiet night. Uh, we had a quiet night back at the cabin. Um, I sat on the deck a little bit um, early this morning and didn't hear anything. I don't know. It's, it's been very quiet. Seems like they're they're not around right now. Uh, I mean, but things can change in you know in a matter of moments. So mm-hmm. I guess uh, if it was predictable and repeatable, we'd have figured it out a long time ago. So yeah. Exactly. yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll have to review that thermal camera deployed here and Damon had one in a tree too but uh, yeah this is the spot we cleared out last year it's nice because it's got a little bit of low ground you got some high ground up over here close to the ocean over there you can kind of see it there and then we've got the trail there and then the rest of the area over there and it goes down to the ocean over there too so you didn't hear anything last night no, it's been quiet. There's been no activity. They're not here or something. Because compared to the stories of previous years, nothing at all. Is it on? Yeah. Based, I have yeah. to turn it on before I put it in there because there's no other way to... Uh, that's what I thought I'd ask because I, I, I put some game cameras up over the winter and I, I left one in set up. It's a, all I got to do is flip the switch and uh, there's like a 30 second delay. Mm-hmm. It's super, super easy, fairly inconvenience. Mm-hmm. Pretty much idiot proof. So Bear couldn't really rip it off now that it's got that 
tether, right? I mean, he'd have to really struggle, right? I would assume so. Yeah, there's gonna be a struggle on it for sure. This would actually be a really good place for a trap, like a camera trap, so to speak. Like, so you have three of them. This, like, you have one over here that's looking at that one, and this one's right. looking at that one, and, that one, and vice versa. So, and you know, you can make you can make one of them that's not as well hidden as the other. So they're looking at that, going, "Ooh, what's that?" And they try to get out of the way, but they walk right into the other one. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. Definitely some footfall areas. That could be from last year. Or mm -hmm. You guys go down this way too, or you came up this way? No, we went that way. Oh, no, I, I was. I meant. Uh, no, we. Um, you and Rob Roy didn't come up here. This was. That was over there. So this is footfall right here. I mean, this is something took this out. That could have been us last year for all I know. I've never been over this part of the mm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty steep down, isn't it? It's really not. This is like the worst part right here. Yeah. You could go with beans if you want. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go that way. Okay. Yeah. You bet. See you guys a little bit. You guys uh, want the radio? No, it's all good. It, 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 this is gonna be. A, we're gonna be there half the time. You guys are be there. Shotgun keeps getting rusty. It's a lot of salt, of course, so important to take care of your gear. footage and audio from last night and not a whole lot, huh? You know, so far not a whole lot. A um, few technical difficulties with the gear, as always. You know, it never seems to fail. Um, but uh, and we're kind of getting back into some of the other stuff, too. We had the long-term audio we're looking at from, this, uh, from the recorder that's right up there by the fire pit. Right. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of a nice kind of review day. We've kind of kicking some ass for the last couple of days. Um, yeah. So it's nice to bring all the evidence in, especially while it's still makes sense of context. You know, yeah, that's, that's the hard part. gets lost. Yeah, so. Here's the madness of your, the uh, madness of the desk. <laughs> so reviewing, uh, reviewing the overnight thermal footage. Didn't really get much yeah. except for possible small critters. This little guy. This little guy comes in a frame. Yeah, these files are big. I just don't want them just straight on the hard drive. The next one.
Well, day number five. We're closing in on close to a week out here. Just another two days. Had to get away because we're running the generator for a little bit. We haven't had much great weather. I mean, today hasn't been raining as much, just cloudy, starting to drizzle a bit. Day number five. We haven't done a whole lot today. We woke up on the ridge this morning. It didn't appear to be much going on. We reviewed the audio. A lot of rain, unfortunately, last night, so it was hard to tell much of anything. Thermal surveillance. Thermal surveillance seemed to capture just uh, some smaller critters and birds flying through the area. It's been very quiet so far. I mean, there's been a couple of these wood knock type things, and that seems to mostly be it. A little disappointed. I'm, you know, in all honesty, just hoping that something picks up. Obviously, from this point on, we still have another, I guess, 10 days, including today, nine days. Uh, it's getting towards the evening of day five here. So, on day seven, we'll be swapping out some people. Luca and Damon are going to be heading out. Yeah, I mean, here's to hoping that something else picks up and we're going to keep trying stuff and we've got other ideas of things we'd like to try. But, um, kind of my thoughts on day five here. And just to kind of share, I mean, you know, this is something that I think, I see the criticism a lot online, and unfortunately our art, we've been conditioned nowadays to believe that uh, the moment the camera's on, Bigfoot should be appearing, and it's very difficult to actually get, in my opinion, actual legitimate Bigfoot evidence or documentation due to the fact that maybe these things are rare or they're just that elusive. I mean, that's another debate we can have. But, uh, you know, the, the criticism that, oh, nothing happens. I mean, sometimes you come out here and nothing does happen. For me personally, you know, listening to some of the stuff even in the audio last night, I heard possible kind of wood knock type sounds. But with some of that rain and stuff in between, it's nothing good enough that I would be, feel comfortable with saying this is a potential knock even even putting it in that potential category, not something I can do. My threshold for potential evidence is, I think, pretty high. It's either got to be really clear or really obvious. You know, back, a good backstory is obviously great in context, but should be able to stand on its own. So that's why a lot of the stuff we've found over these past few years has just been, hasn't been, you know, a smoking gun kind of proof sort of thing. I don't, I don't know if I'm even necessarily after that. I mean, for me, it's been more of a journey up until this point. Just being able to come out to a location as incredible as this one and spend such an amount of time is beyond a blessing. But uh, I'm still optimistic that, you know, even, but as we've talked about, you know, and I've talked about with the guys and even saying, even if we got a crystal clear thermal video out here tomorrow or whenever, that wouldn't be enough because in this day and age with AI technology and all the fakes and everything online, uh, it would either be accused of being a hoax or just outright fake or something along those lines. Um, nothing really is going to prove it, so I don't even know if I'm necessarily in it to prove prove what these things are, they're out, if they're out here, um, which I do believe there's something out here. But uh, it's more of a personal journey, I suppose, for myself, and uh, being able to bring people along for the journey with me is part of it, certainly. In the spirit of adventure, something I grew up with and, you know, Really enjoyed hearing stories of others' adventures and being able to create my own now and have so many people want to join and come along with it. So I hope folks do appreciate that, the effort it takes to come out to places like this and the dedication. And, and I'm not asking to be pat on the back or anything like that. Just uh, trying to kind of, just trying to talk about these sort of the realistic expectations, I suppose, that I have that... Uh, you know, I guess a lot of people don't have because we've been so inundated with fake TV shows and even fake stuff online that, you know, people expect they're almost demanding something so hard to produce. Um, so that's, that's another, I suppose, conversation for another day. But these are just my thoughts in the moment, in the field. So I'm going to take this time now and work on my day number five journal entry. And you'll have to complete it in the morning, of course, because of tonight's activities. You know, what we end up doing tonight, I'll, I'll put it in here later on. Um, I believe it is around 8.45 p.m. right now. Doing another 
thermal fright flight right now. Anything unique or interesting? Oh wow, water. already at the water line. Yeah, we're kind of at the edge of that. I think we're closer to this side of the water then. Okay, now here's the cliff right here. Let me see if I can do a nice pirouette around this tree here while I'll keep the camera on us. I had a little bit of, yeah. Hit the thermal mode, I'm just curious what we look like going through the trees. Oh wow. You could really see us even going through the trees, huh? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Then as you look at us, we get blocked a little bit, but the should be able to pick it up again. Too, we're just too white. We're too yeah. hot. You, can you see prefer a white hot for that? Yeah, because the rocks really kind of stick out. You know, I can do this, like um, a red hot. There's the iron red. Oh wow! What did you film that bear in Bluff Creek with? It's white hot. White goes, it's red tint actually, it's, it, uh, it's this one. Yep, oh yeah, 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 right. Yeah. So that's the generator, this yeah. one? Mm -hmm. So then, there's us, okay. That's us. Yep. Very foggy night. The uh, islands have disappeared. What do you think, Beans? Uh, I think it's a good night. We're gonna go up to the fire pit and try and draw attention to ourselves. Make a make a show. Spooky out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Ready to go? Ready. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. All righty. Let's do it. Squatch token. Yes. Ooh. Oh, about to leave that. Nice. Alright, so we've got this portable speaker. We're gonna put on a nice little show. Get some music on. So what are we just here? So we were sitting here around the campfire and we heard a, initially what we thought was a boom and then uh, a few seconds later another one. There it goes again. Uh, followed by a big splash 
and we can't see what it is, but I, I'm pretty sure it's probably it's, it's probably a whale breaching. Yeah, we've had humpbacks come through this here all all week, so that sure sounds plausible. We thought it was the glacier calving, which is only five or six miles away. So, but this is a lot closer. This is right out there. See it again. Sound smaller. Thought they'd be sleeping at night. About 3 a.m. Another very quiet night. Just a lot of whale noises and seals and stuff splashing around, but nothing. Yeah, he knew, he knew whales breached at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, nothing much aside from that. Another quiet night. Hopefully tomorrow night we got one more with these guys. Hopefully something happens. Yeah, the squatches hate us. They're not coming back. <laughs> Sun's starting to come up. It's gonna be lighter soon. Well, it's day. It's day number six out here. Yeah, it's day number six. I losing track of time a little bit. We had us a long night last night by the fire pit. Stayed till about almost after 3 a.m. So the sun was starting to get uh, coming out, so it was getting a little bit brighter out there. Didn't hear anything again. We heard those whales going off and uh, other kind of ocean animals, but man, it's been really quiet. As I was kind of saying the other day, how you know you can come out to a place like this and have nothing happen. Beans has certainly experienced that in the past, but then you come out other times and a lot of weird things happen. But nothing here has happened really that I can say is definitely potentially interesting. It's just not, criteria is not, uh, not good enough for me. Yeah, they'd heard some possible knocks and drumming noise, so that's potentially something, but just compared to last year, how much stuff we had happen, you know, it was later in the week, it seems like if it was a similar pattern, I would have expected maybe something to take place so far. So we've got all these experiments and things that we've wanted to try that, uh, you know, largely seem fruitless uh, without any kind of indication that there may be some sort of presence in the area. You know, we're still, we've still got the thermal drone for today. Hopefully the rain holds out so we can continue to use that, especially if we get anything tonight. But uh, tomorrow, these guys are going to be heading out and we're going to be getting a swap of crew, so to speak. But I think today we're going to spend our last day here with with the guys, uh, do some exploring, check out maybe some of the areas by uh, this creek that comes out here. That's a fresh water source. So there may be evidence of stuff over there. Maybe we might find other critters and that sort of thing in that area. I think that would be an area to, to check out and uh, potential to kind of scope it out, see if there's anything over there. Hopefully it holds, the weather holds out today and we continue to have just these semi-cloudy conditions where we have pretty good visibility for the most part. So that's, uh, that's sort of the plan here. Get your shorts. Get your lightsaber. Okay, 
we are going to go now to explore that creek over there where there's two creeks and they feed up into the valley that kind of looks like the direction where wildlife might come from. Mm -hmm. That's where uh, Damon filmed the Sitka deer the other night up on that bluff which is kind of above that meadow that's above the two creeks. So I think this will be a cool kind of area to just go check out. Yeah, plus last time you guys did it, it was a ton of snow up there and things like we that. We couldn't so. get past the cabin yeah. over there, yeah. I think it's a really good opportunity to maybe find some tracks of anything. Yep. So, so we'll yeah. take the we're gonna take the skiff out and just do another beach landing and park it out there. We've got a hair sample up on the this scratched up side of this old shed, probably most likely bear, but just in case, figured we might as well collect it. Mm -hmm. so Damon, yes, I'm gonna just ask you do me a favor and hold this. Thanks. Nice kit. Yeah, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my mask on to not contaminate the sample. Hopefully I'm doing this right. I'm not a scientist. That beer, you should put another one on down the bottom. You think? No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this here for now. Hey, Luca, turn your head and cough. <laughs> All right, so we got that stuff. All right, now I've got I think I can sterilize with these prep pads, right? Or should I just pull this out? This has never been opened. What are you going to put it in? Uh, I have paper bags. So I have these. Can you just kind of pinch through the paper bag and grab it that way without opening that up? Or you can use that, I I've got to open this anyway. I mean. It's a brand new kit. Yeah, I'd say sterilized. So, that pad. Okay, so we've got our paper bags. Uh, this is just trash. I don't know where to put all this stuff. We'll just drop it on the floor. We'll pick it up afterwards. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't want the paper bags. Put it in your pocket? Or I'll just put them back in here. That's smart. Okay, let's bust this guy open. Let me know if I'm doing all right, Luca. Is that good? Yeah. Is this how you're supposed to do it? Looks like it to me. Yeah, okay. looks like it to me as well. All right. Um, got my paper bag. Okay, so it was one. All right, let's go get the sample. Hold on, before you collect it, let me just get a shot. Can you just put that whole thing down, Damon? If you want to take some pictures, we actually, we might want to get some pictures of this before I grab it. Let him just get in here. Just for documentation's sake, I just want Damon to get a couple pictures of this, you know. Got it? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, ready? Pulling it off. Yeah, I think that might be brown there. Actually, some left there besides all of them. Yep. I was thinking we could do a separate bag and we kind of look at them in the microscope. Yeah, this, sure. This. Okay. Smart. Okay. <laughs> this guy's in here. I'm not going to lick this to seal it, obviously, but I have the samples in here. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is sharpie and we'll just label it. Today's date is 23rd? 23rd? 23rd. 23, 23. Nice, not bad. I don't know if I should put this in a plastic bag or not. I've been told not to put samples in plastic bags, but I believe you can put like I, I think a it's paper the, bag. Yeah, I think the paper will work. All right. You know what? I'm just going to grab this whole thing out of here and then. Hopefully this is right, and you know, feel free to grill me if I'm doing this wrong, but... I'm just gonna write on here to... Alrighty, we got it down. So, I think what we'll do is we'll put this sample I don't know if I should keep it in the kit. I probably should have like a allocated slot. I can put this back here. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. This is all one spot then. I don't want to touch anything that's in this kit at yeah. all. All right, so I'll just put this down here now. I think for for this next sample, we can just put it in a plastic bag. Yeah. Just because we're not as worried about this sample getting contaminated. This is more for this microscopic analysis, so. Yeah. You know what, I'm just even going to grab it with my hand. It's going to be easier that way to grab it. Yeah, it kind of looks like, what, undercoat, I think? Yeah, I mean, it was two different shades, so... Yeah, it's been there long enough to get bleached. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Well, it's in. Nice find, guys. Yeah, that's cool. Nothing else like that here, so maybe somebody got... I mean, if it's not there, maybe someone else got it. Mm -hmm. That's the hopeful thing. Here's the masks. Okay, microscope. Shoot. So that's there. Got our plastic bags back in here. All on the go. There you have it. Whew. All right. 
So yeah, we don't know what that is. I think probably bear, given it's right near some bear damage, but you see how wide it is here. Maybe something walking by. That's the place to get nicked. So uh, again, most likely bear, but still, we just figured we'd get it just in case and we'll have that sent out to some people that uh, I'm in touch with that do, there's a current study going on with Professor Darby Orkut, who's doing a DNA study. And then we've also got somebody who will be able to look at just the hair itself. And I'm, I'm fully expecting bear. I I'm hoping it's uh, brown bear. That'd be really cool to see evidence of brown bears here because we haven't seen them on this side. Could be a, br a black bear though, because they do have, they can have that cinnamon color and the hair was two different colors. It was black and a brownish color. So um, you know, when in doubt, collect it. Like they say, when in doubt, cast it. We collected the sample, whatever it is, we don't know, but uh, at least we tried to do our, the best we could to our ability to collect it. So without having beans with us, you know, having that law enforcement collection background, I think I did a decent job. I don't know, um, but we'll have to see what happens with the sample. Yeah, we've got a lot more hair here. I mean, again, that's in a perfect place to get nicked though. It's all on here, I mean. It I'm is also where the bear here. damage is. Yeah, so it could be black bear. Very, very likely. I don't know, it's kind of hoping, I'm kind of hoping brown bear. That would be really cool. There's a shitload of hair here. Hey, here's this guy. Say what? Uh, could be some damage. This break here? Moving through the area, yeah. So. Damage is sustained moving through the area. <laughs> well, it's kind of twisted. So it was up here. It had to come off this way. So did some, I mean, you know, whack it and turn it. Cause it's got, you can see it's got this, uh, it's kind of this twist under. There's animals don't usually do that. I mean, it could have done that when it fell down naturally. Um, I don't know, how would that go back up there? Let me see. Oh, I'm on. Okay. So, something had to knock it off, and it looks like it just fell like that. Yeah, I hit that, turned it down. Okay. That still is a way, weird way for it to come off, so something knocked it off. Yep. I agree. Break right here. It's pretty high up. Got higher than me. Yeah, there's definitely a path through here. Yeah, there's definitely a trail through here. I mean, something's gone up here. Oh, there's kind of a little trail here. Looks like that one crosses over there, huh? It goes down to the water. Yeah. So we know that's where they drink. There's yeah. a little bit of a slight trail here. Follow this up. Yeah. You want to go down there? I'm going to go up this way.
So you're we're about to launch it up here. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's be great. Like I said, I think here to scare the crap out of me last, last night because I at the cabin from up here just a bit further up. I lost signal and thankfully the return to home worked just like it was supposed to. Well, luckily we're closer to the valley now. We can survey it. Yeah, I hope so. There's a critter. You got a critter? Oh wow. Mm -hmm. It's like a bird though. Zoom in on it. Oh wait, nope. You got something? Got something. Let's see. You got something on there. Is it moving? Might be a rock, but it, it definitely is warm. Yeah, it stood out more than the rocks have. I feel like right above it now. Oh, oh yeah. What is that? Do you want to zoom in on it? What is it? Well, let's go visible. Zoom in. It's right there, whatever it is. That brown thing? Yeah. Please be a Sasquatch. Whoa, what is it? It's moving its head. I believe. Is it laying down? I think it's a... Is it a deer or a bear? God, look at it. I don't want to say an ungulate of some sort. Uh, I mean, maybe a. Oh, there's a head. It moved. Ears? It's a deer. So yeah. You can see the ears at the top of the I head, kind of flopping it, back yeah. and forth yeah, there. Yeah. It's can you go deer. back to thermal? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, you, if you look, just watch him, you can see the, the ears kind of flop when he kind of does this. Yep. Oh, but that's a great wow. sign, though. Look at that. There's an awesome sign. Second deer. Again, this animal is not supposed to be here. We're capturing evidence of it. Okay. Nope. It's probably not the only one in that little meadowy spot. Right, let's check it out. Like I said, this thing just popped. Dude, just pop. it's yeah. Well, see, when I noticed that too, I'm like, that. You said it might be a rock, and I'm like, I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you have more experience recognizing stuff, so. Is that something? No. This is the stump of a tree sticking straight out. Yeah. Imagine something just starts running off. Large biped. Yeah. Let me uh, run a do some crisscrosses across this meadow. Yeah, it's nice to have someone looking over your shoulder because I'm I'm trying to fly, keep track of this stuff yeah. too. I miss things. So I, I yeah, I'm, that's why I'm like scanning. How high up are we now? Uh, okay, we're still following the creek. Yep. Yeah, still in the creek here. Oh, oh, I see. Interesting. Got a little ways to go in this bowl here. Here's the other creek right here. Oh, do they converge? Yeah, looks like it. Wow. Right, uh, well, past where I'm at. It's like back over here. Right. But you know, if I were a squash or something like that, what a great place to live. You got water in the middle. Yeah. Get a deer coming down. through, yeah. yeah. Go down to the beach for some seafood. Mm -hmm. Oop. Oh, I'm gonna go. coming out. Hey. We have moose. If you don't know what it is, we'll. It looks like a deer, but we'll check it out later on a bigger screen, but uh, it's good to see that there's other food sources up here. 10-4. I'm back at the cabin. Everything's 10-4 here. All right, cool. We are going to fly for a bit, and then we'll make our way back. What's that? Oh, over there. That's probably definitely a bird. Like a big one. Oh, yeah. Look how it's glowing. 
Can we oh, see it? It looks like an eagle. Oh, cool. Oh, is that a porcupine? What is that? It doesn't look like a bird. I don't know what that is. Baby squash, we're calling it. Yeah, baby squash. We're calling it. No, just kidding. Oh yeah. Kind of looks like a porcupine, but I'm yeah, not it looks sure. Yeah, pretty round. I don't know what a wolverine's supposed to look like. So hey, another critter. Wolverines are more long than round, I believe. Yeah, this is uh, <clears throat> this makes me happy seeing more of these guys. Yep, it's a good sign. Oh, there's something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he looks definitely deer-like. Oh wait, what if it's a wolf? Is that that's it's not the same deer, is it? I don't think so. Oh uh, no, uh, regular mode. I think he's r right in there. Yep. Oh wait. Yep. Ah, I are. It's a bull. Let's so zoom in on zoom it. On. Yeah, that looks like just another deer to me. Go which back to IR if you don't mind. Which again is excellent. Yeah, nice you can head. see the body shape, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, well, uh, again, another good sign. Two deers and whatever that was in the tree. One more level. That's it's getting funny. foggy. Right, there we go. Here. We got some more. We got some more meadow over here. Okay. Eagle got murdered here. No bones, just feathers. Yeah, it's eagle. Yeah, something took it in there and ate it. Potential knock over here. I mean, it drew my attention. And I turned my head, so, so, so there, there was definitely a noise because I turned my head, like, instinctively. Well, what happened? I thought I heard, like, a clunk, and I instinctively turned my head to look at it. Really? Yeah. Oh, it was pretty faint, but I still drew my, yeah, drew my game. Yeah. Get that drone up again. <laughs> but uh, with the creek... It does go downhill from here, I'll sign it. It's yeah. too far. Potential corn? Yeah, yeah. But with the creek there, it's mm, Hard to tell probably that. just a creek. I don't know how often I've heard of random thumps and creeks, some of them moving fast like they are, yeah, just as like a rock turns over or something. Yeah, yeah. But, all right, so Luca thought he heard a clunk back there. We're moving back towards the uh, boat right now. We come over here, so that's where the second creek is in there. Hear a bird of some kind. But move down here, kind of quietly.
Yeah, let's well, come here. Can you hear me? He's way far back. Oh shit. Well, what do you see? Well, I don't think it's a crater. It's a long distance. That's the hard part. I can't really tell because I'm moving, you know? Yeah. But in relation to things around it, not really, but. God. Squatch will sit there and stare at you and I even move. How far up is it? Is it? Yeah, I'm picking them up straight through. Right through. It's it's like I got a scene between this this tree, that tree, and this one back there. It's just right back there, right up in there, and there's something warm up there. It hasn't really moved though. It's the same shape. It hasn't hasn't uh, at all. <coughs> Let me see here. Oh. Okay, that must be it. I, uh, yeah, um, and actually widening my field of view a little bit and kind of looking around, there's actually, it looks like there's a tree back there that, that has similar temperature up high and up there, so I'm thinking it. Hmm. I'm just, oh boy, that's pretty warm. Though. I wonder if I'm moving. Spotted something on the thermal here. Backtracking a little bit. Seriously? But, uh, we weren't sure if it was like an inanimate object or anything. Yeah, it was, right. it was, it was right. super warm. What did you think it was, Damon? Uh, it, it just, it was a... Uh, so it was between two trees and behind it. And kind of lowish, kind of sitting under there. A little undefined, but it was kind of vertical. Okay. I wouldn't say it was a head or anything like that, but it was just a kind of sticky between some. Are you points. filming? Uh, I did film it, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna jump up here with. I got a yeah, filming. Yeah, we'll throw it just right there. I see a tree glowing over there. Got a tree glowing over there. That might be what was giving that off. That's probably it. There's no way something will be able to get away that quickly. You did hear that weird noise though. So what do you think, Damon? Last night, I mean, what did you think of today? Today was a, was a great day. I was looking forward to spending some time trying to gather evidence, you know, look for evidence. Um, we've been sort of in awe of everything around us, like, wow, this is cool, wow, these are rocks, and forgetting what we're, what we're here for. Um, nice hike up the path up the way. Uh, looks like we found some, uh, some possible hair, some interesting hair, I should say. More than likely, it's probably a bear of some sort, but, you know, we're going to check it out. Uh, drone footage, great, great, uh, great drone footage today, you know, with the... Uh, um, with the uh, couple of deer, the porcupine in the tree. Um, yeah, interesting tracks with the, the various game trails around there, things like that. I, um, it was a good day.
Like you said, it kind of validates the equipment. Yeah, it does. You know, you're always wondering, like, does this even work anymore? You know, is there anything up here? Because we're not, we weren't finding anything all week. I mean, we finally found that one deer, um, but today was pretty amazing, actually, on the on the stuff that we were able to find. Awesome. Yeah. Well, as you can see, it just, I mean, the the deer they just pop right out. It was yeah. it's unbelievable. Last night here, any any kind of closing thoughts? Yeah, I wish it wasn't the last night here. <laughs> you know, back to reality, right? But, uh, you know, we got one more night. We're just going to hang out and enjoy it. Um, enjoy the company. And, um, yeah, that's about it. Sweet. Hopefully the Squatch will pay us a visit. Share some thoughts. I don't really know what to say, but... Well, what would you think of today? Today was cool. We got to hike up to a cabin that sort of abandoned we're not really sure but uh, yeah that side of the bay it's a lot more gnarly in terms of rocks and trees and creeks compared to up up past this cabin um, so it was slow going but it was awesome to be to be hiking out here um, yeah I mean in terms of potential Sasquatch activity we might have got something on the audio as, as we were going through it so that's pretty cool to see um, what did you hear it today? You thought you heard something? Yeah, I mean, as we were walking down from, from the cabin over there, I thought I heard a couple of knocks, but it's hard to say with the creek running right by you. The creek can make some strange noises right. that makes it sound like something else. But, um, yeah, it was an awesome day. I'm glad to have come out here. I wish it wasn't the last day, but I'm stoked to be out here, yeah. honestly. So. Well, Damon, before we you know wrap it up, he mentioned a good point that we heard some stuff while we were reviewing the audio today. You know, potential uh, kind of knock-like noises. Oh yeah, yeah. So I had the overnight audio that we placed on Sunday when we got here. It was just running the whole time. Uh, it's been running every night. Um, yeah, that first and second night, there's uh, quite a few uh, knocks um, or rock clacks. I, I haven't quite decided yet. Um, I'm, I'm trying to decide if it's uh, seal slaps you know, on the water here, we've been hearing that a lot, you know, all week. Um, but it doesn't quite, it, it doesn't, but it doesn't all come together because there's no water splash in there either. So, um, it needs another second look. That was just a cursory look this afternoon. So it's going to take another, uh, just a, a quiet time with some headphones on to, uh, to really kind of evaluate what it was. But yeah, it was, uh, they were interesting. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought it was kind of intriguing. So yeah, we're going to head up now. Just go back to our campsite from a couple nights ago, hang out there, get some stuff, and kind of see what, uh, what's poking around. It's pretty light out. It is now just about almost 12:20, and uh, the woods are very dark and creepy, but not not the uh, the environment. So yeah, it's like midnight, and it's like <laughs> that's this that's the thing here. The rest of that night was quiet. As the trip wrapped up for Damon and Luca, we found that these last couple of days proved to be overall quiet, but were a validation of equipment such as the thermal drone. This is a technology that I believe will become an essential part of field research going forward, especially as these thermal drones become cheaper and more available, as has happened with handheld thermal units over the past decade. While we didn't capture anything unusual, being able to work with this tech for the past week was an eye-opener for sure. On the next episode of Dark Coast, we switch around the crew and continue our research of Area A, prepared for anything nature throws at us in this remote and incredible location.